Now on local 10 news at 430 Jacksonville Beach getting battered by Hurricane Matthew. The beach breached. You can see water rushing in right past the sand and flooding is definitely a concern in Jacksonville Beach. This is video from the road showing some streets underwater. We want to take you live right now to Ormond Beach. This is near Daytona north of it. In fact, and you can see the cloudy skies, the wow. ominous skies, and then look at that surf. It is just kicked up. Well, well, storm surge is also causing chaos in Daytona Beach today. You can see here our Andrew Perez is reporting that some massive power outages in Daytona and gas stations are shut down from a lack of power. And we're also seeing pictures out of St. Augustine where storm surge has flooded streets. These are actually people who are stuck at a bed and breakfast. They didn't heed the warnings to leave. And right now they have nowhere to go. Roads turning into rivers. Check out this Kmart in West Palm Beach. It is uh, it had a uh, part of a facade that was ripped off. You can see a large chunk on the ground there that never stood a chance from Matthew's destructive winds. And in Juneau Beach, the storm affected power to a lot of people and businesses. The lights at this building in Juneau Beach. Look at this flickering on and off early this morning. Well, back here in South Florida, conditions are slowly getting back to normal after Matthew stayed off the coast. And local 10's Todd Tom is in Fort Lauderdale with how businesses are looking past Matthew and I'm sure they're pretty glad about it Todd. Yeah, Janine and Calvin, I don't have to tell you this is a pretty welcome sight. You see these restaurant tours getting uh, their restaurants back together and putting up the mood lighting and expecting those customers are going to open at five o'clock at this particular restaurant. You know, these are the sights and sounds of commerce along Las Olas Boulevard here in downtown Fort Lauderdale after it was completely shut down as Hurricane Matthew approached. Today we saw many businesses happy to open up, but still we did see many others still closed or even shuttered for uh, today and not opening until this evening. For businesses along this busy retail and restaurant road, the closure was an economic hit. Rent along Las Olas, as you know, is not very cheap. And while no one was complaining, you could tell that it stung. Everyone was in agreement on two basic things. First of all, it was a huge relief not to get hit with a damaging storm. And it is great to be back up and back in business. It's a big hit for us because it's slow season right now and, you know, we're waiting one more month for season to kick in, but hopefully tonight we'll, we'll see some business. Happy to be open. Stinks to have lost a day of business, but luckily everybody's safe and, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers for everybody over in Haiti and the other countries that are that got hit a lot harder. I actually went to Target today and they were open. I was so excited. So I had to get some things that I forgot to get during the hurricane. Hurricane. I like that Christy said hurricane with the air quotes. You know, that's a good thing. Obviously, we are watching all the damage that is happening up the coast. Certainly not beating our chest. Just glad that we were blessed not to get hit with this storm. Coming up at 530, you know, I was here Wednesday night when every one of these businesses was shut down and shuttered, and it was like a ghost town. We're going to juxtapose, uh, juxtaposition what it is like out here today and what it was like then when we were expecting that cat for hurricane. For now, we're live on Las Olas. Todd Tongan, Local 10 News. Okay, Todd, thanks a lot. And right now, Matthew remains a Category 3 hurricane churning right off of our coast, and it hasn't quite made landfall yet. Let's turn now to our Betty Davis, who is watching the storm. And uh, Betty, those folks north of us have a very long night ahead of them. It's already starting. They are getting beat up in a very real way as the core of this system just sort of hugs so very closely to the coastline and the system itself is so sprawling, but that center of circulation 45 miles east southeast of Jacksonville Beach, Florida. So Jacksonville Beach right about there. You can see the outer limits of it. Those bands extending all the way up into the Carolinas already as it's moving northbound at 12 miles per hour and in general expected to stick to the coastline right now. Maximum sustained winds at 115 miles per hour cat three, but will or is expected to weaken to a cat two impact the coast of South Carolina and maybe a section of North Carolina too and could loop back down but encounter wind shear and weaken and the big question mark is will it run back into our direction and you'll see how we handle that in the seven day forecast in a few minutes. If it does, it's likely to be in a much weakened state, which we like. I do want to show you this graphic because if you're ever wondering if there's ever been a storm to hit Florida and then loop back around and get us again. Yes, there have been two we're illustrating here. Uh, number eight in 1906 and then Gordon in 1994 and we'll revisit this again in a, in a few minutes guys. 
Okay, Betty, thanks a lot. Over in Miami-Dade now, life is also returning to normal following Matthew. Our team coverage continues with Local 10's Leanne Motohone, who is live in Miami Shores right now. Leanne. And Miami-Dade County fared very well during and after Hurricane Matthew. If you walk around Miami Shores right now, you'd be hard-pressed to find any symbol that Matthew was even here, except for maybe this. This tree was once toppled, blocking the roadway. Public Works folks got it together. They cleared it all out, and now it just serves as a reminder of what those winds can do. Members of Miami Shores Public Works Department hard at work since early this morning, trying to clear a large tree that fell onto Northeast 101st Street near Park Road. The tree fell yesterday during the brunt of Hurricane Matthew. The tree even knocked out power to nearby homes. They took out power from what I understand from 6th Avenue over to Grand Concourse and then 100th and 101st. But it seems this was the worst damage in the city of Miami Shores and largely in South Florida. Neighbors here say they were glad to see that their homes weren't badly damaged. I think we have a little debris like broken sticks and things like that, but really nothing. Yeah. I've, we've had worse like Thursday afternoon storms. Nothing. nothing. We even had our electricity, thank God. We were prepared for, we had our shutters, we had our uh, stuff prepared, but uh, besides that, we didn't do no cleaning, everything was okay. And so with the day off of work, these guys decided to head to the golf course. I think we dodged a bullet uh, and I think we're very lucky that it never hit us. And for these kids who were a little disappointed to have not experienced their first hurricane. It's kind of like happy and sad because we have no electricity. Exactly and, and no it'd be really hard. But more family times. They got to enjoy a day at the park. Thankfully there was no damage. It could have been a lot worse than it was. Yeah, those kiddos were a little bummed out that they didn't really feel their first hurricane. But don't worry, I let them know it's not a lot crack up to be. Everyone here still with their thoughts on folks just north of us who are really feeling the brunt of the storm. Reporting live in Miami Shores, Leanne Morejon, Local 10 News. Leanne, thank you. Miami Dade Fire Rescue, they have deployed an 80 person task force to help deal with the damage from Hurricane Matthew throughout our state. This is video courtesy of Miami Dade Fire Rescue and it shows those trucks hitting the road. They are headed to North Florida to help with cleanup efforts. And we're also told that Miami Fire Rescue as well they have deployed units too. And as we mentioned, Matthew is making life very difficult on New Smyrna Beach. No doubt. Joining us now is Local 10's Marcy Gonzalez, who is live there. Marcy, set the scene for us. Well, this is nothing compared to what we saw here earlier when we were really getting the brunt of the storm. Um, earlier, the flooding from this river behind me actually came up to just a few feet behind me. So you can see it's already receded a lot, but we're still getting some wind gusts here. The rain has pretty much been relentless and you can see some of the damage left behind from the winds here. Uh, it's brought down trees. It's brought down large branches. Um, people are still being warned to stay inside of their homes because the threat from Matthew still isn't over here, but we are seeing people coming out. Take a look at the damage. We even saw someone out already trying to clean up from the storm. Guys, back to you. And Marcy, what about the businesses there? Have uh, are, are they in fact uh, without power and are they shut down as well? Yeah, a lot of businesses are still closed and a, a lot of this area is still without power. The bed and breakfast where we're staying right here on the water, nice enough to let us do live shots in front of their building. They lost power around 2.30 this morning and there's no sign of getting it back anytime soon. We haven't seen any power trucks out. We know they're working as quickly as they can to restore power, but as you know, uh, more than a million people across the state are without electricity right now. So uh, everyone in this area being patient and waiting for the power to come back on. And speaking of bed and breakfast is north of where you are. There's actually one we're told that uh, is very flooded. There were people who did not heed evacuation warnings right. and so now they're stuck inside. Are people heeding the warnings there? Are you finding that uh, people where you are in New Smyrna, are they kind of stuck without a place to go? You know, a lot of people did heed the warning that those warnings came yesterday. They were told to be out, especially from the coastal areas, from Beachside uh, before six o'clock last night. But uh, I'll tell you, there are people who are now going back over to that area to take a look at the damage because they have no idea what's over there. They, they're not hearing any reports because so many of their friends and neighbors did leave, did listen to all of the warnings. And so now uh, starting to assess the damage, but it's still, uh, according to officials, way too early for that. They really want people to wait until the storm completely passes before they go outside to take a look. And that storm is not gone yet. Marcy Gonzalez live in New Smyrna Beach. Uh, we thank you for your coverage.
Well, people in the Bahamas are also cleaning up today after Matthew's gusty winds left a trail of destruction. Local 10 News reporter Terrell Fournay has been in Nassau. He is live there now with how things are looking. And Janine and Calvin, we are actually in Great Exuma on the island here where we're learning that there have been two serious storm related injuries thanks to Hurricane Matthew. In fact, those individuals are still in the process of being airlifted out. And the reason for the delay, the airport here on Great Exuma Island has been closed for the past few days. The cleanup is underway across the island as the locals work to get things back up and running. Exuma International Airport, the lifeline to the vital tourism industry that keeps Great Exuma going, is getting its final inspection. This is actually the canopy that covers the, um, the staging area for our baggage holding area. It was bolted down. Airport manager John Nixon's job is to scour every inch of the runway and the surrounding facilities for damage and debris. Those items can puncture your tires or get ingested in the aircraft engine and really cause some problems. So uh, I picked up maybe about eight or nine screws. And despite a battered satellite dish, the control tower is fine. The airport is officially open now. A drive further into town and we see this, a pricey boat blown onto sand by the hurricane force winds. And another moved across this harbor, slamming against a seawall alongside a waterside road. And this rope was tied after the storm to keep this big boat in place because the owners are worried about it going under. The boat is holding for now, but it's quite a sight for those driving by. It blew right up into the rocks and then there are two that blew right up on the beach. So we know that power is slowly being restored. Some people have it, some people don't. And the island's water tower suffered uh, some severe damage as well. So there is a fear for the days and weeks following if the island will be able to sustain running water. I should also mention that I've gotten a lot of questions and uh, Twitter comments, people really concerned about those swimming pigs and how they fared during the hurricane. Well, we revisited that island and we'll have more on that. We'll check up with them coming up at 530. For now, that's the latest here in Great Exuma. I'm Terrell Fournay, Local 10 News. Okay, a lot of cleanup ahead for them. Thanks a lot there, Terrell. Also coming up, we continue our team coverage on Hurricane Matthew and the damage that it caused. And Matthew remains a massive Category 3 hurricane just about 45 miles off the coast of Jacksonville Beach, and a stretch of the beach there has already been breached. And these live pictures right now, boy, you can barely see outside. So the beach is getting breached, but also in the metro areas, a big concern is the St. John's River, whether that is going to flood. That's definitely a concern. We're going to stay on top of Hurricane Matthew coming up. When severe weather threatens, stay in touch with Local 10 News simulcast. On 101.5 Light FM, 102.7 The Beach, AM 790 The Ticket, 104.3 The Shark, and 96.7 and 101.7 Pirate Radio Key West. And welcome back to our coverage as we continue to track Hurricane Matthew, now a Category 3 storm. You can see this live picture here as uh, the strong outer bands of the storm and near the center of the storm continue to get very close to the eastern coast of Florida, the northeastern coast of Florida. Not quite sure where this picture is coming to us from, but you can see the rain is really coming down. We've seen some parts of uh, Florida where the streets have just turned into rivers, and it looks like there's a little bit of flooding here on the street, but nothing significant. But you can also see that there is no one on the street, so That's at right. least where this is, people are sort of heeding the warnings to stay off the road. Not to mention more than a million people still without power north of us. Hurricane Matthew stayed off the coast when it passed through South Florida, but it did some damage actually to a well-known pier. Local 10's Erica Reiko is in Deerfield Beach with a cleanup there. The plan is for part of this pier to open up here sometime today in Deerfield Beach, but the very end of it from that green pavilion on will remain closed, at least until a contractor is able to get up underneath the pier to inspect the structural part of it. The railing ripped off, pieces of the wooden flooring popped out, loose hardware, all the result of storm surge, says these engineers, waves that reached at least 20 feet high and crashed into the Deerfield Beach Pier. I was up late last night hoping to see something scary 
and I heard about the pier on the news. Danielle Bender is out filming the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew, along with several other folks who came out at the first light of day. A beautiful sunrise over the beach, but not too much damage to see. We're, you know, very fortunate. Just a little damage to the pier, but other than that, you know, not too bad. You can see the wiring here. Some of the pier lighting damaged in the storm as well, but more importantly, the navigational lights. This pier extends 1000 feet into the ocean, so they really want to remind boaters that right now they need to know the lights on the outside of the pier are off. Everything that is blocked off, it is blocked off for a reason. Uh, we have floorboards that are loose and it is not a safe situation. While this group works to secure and block off the end part of the pier to the public, City crews along the beach are doing what they can to restore the sand. Matthew also brought on some beach erosion. So Deerfield Beach, it's a populated, busy place again, although not the best beach day, even though the storm is gone. You know, I learned something from the residents here. They call it the Deerfield Dome, having been spared from devastation during many storms before, and they say they are thankful that is the case with Hurricane Matthew as well. In Deerfield Beach, Eric Areco, Local 10 News. You know, it's really unbelievable. Matthew was a Category 4 when it was turning off our coast, yeah. and thank goodness it yeah. didn't do any worse damage. Yeah, so many people are saying that we dodged a bullet, but we still have to watch it where it goes up north for the uh, coastal regions up there. Betty, it is going to be a long day and a long night for them. It is a new update in on Matthew. The maximum sustained winds are now 110 miles per hour, so a little weaker, but no question about it. Still a formidable system causing de uh, devastation already for parts of northeast Florida. In the meantime, we look outside here and we get total relaxation through the lens of our Ocean Key Resort camera. Looks so lovely out. The breeze, it is definitely kicking at times. Those palms swaying, winds from the west sustained near 20 in some of your communities, especially near the waters. And notice Key West at 87, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, upper 80s. And it looks good along the Hollywood Broadwalk, although though this has not really been the day to be out in the Atlantic waters. The rip current risk still is high. For tonight, not a whole lot of rainfall expected. Winds from the west southwest around 15 miles per hour. Fairly quiet conditions out there. Here and there, you almost see a hint of a few showers trying to come through. Uh, this is way, way, way down on the bottom side of Matthew, which is churning up toward the north, getting farther and farther away from us. The core of the system, there it is, just east of Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Lots of rain with this. Some of these areas will pick up 8 to 12 inches. And then, of course, there's the tornado threat we see playing out right now, now too, along the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina. Now, as far as we're concerned, as Matthew gets farther away, we get some drier air coming into play. So we're looking at some mainly dry days between Saturday and Sunday. If you have something you need to get outside and get done, I know you're going to be able to accomplish that. We'll continue to follow the track of Matthew and we'll talk about whether it loops back around here and how strong it could be when it gets here. Expect it to be really weak, but because of that feature right now, it looks like our rain chances will go back up next Tuesday, Wednesday. Janine? We know you'll be watching. Betty, thank you. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and some South Florida doctors are actually going above and beyond to help women in need. Local 10 medical specialist Christy Kruger has more in our health cast. Well, while the death rates from breast cancer have been really decreasing since 1989, which is great news, survivors are often left with lasting reminders of their battle against the disease. And that is why dermatologist Dr. Leslie Clark Loser, as well as her partners at Precision Skin Institute, are initiating a free, I said free, program to help erase surgical scars with specialized laser treatments. Various lasers address different aspects of the scars, be the depressed type of scar or raised up scar. Um, some lasers can uh, attack the redness of the scar. Some lasers can polish up the bumpiness of the scar. Here we are, two board certified dermatologists with extensive laser experience and the tools and the technology to help. And this is our way that we feel that we can give back and support women and men in our community who have gone through these procedures. Not having that daily reminder of what you've been through and the stress and everything, it'll be huge. Now the program PSI Honors Survivors has been in the works for about one year and it is very successful. The doctors say they will evaluate patients on a case-by-case -case basis, but care is available to potentially anyone who could benefit from laser therapy for their scarring. Also in today's HealthCast, 
Wonder why some people can drink coffee and others can't? Well, health experts say it's all about your metabolism. For slow metabolizers, coffee can really be kind of a problem. It can cause abnormal heartbeats, headaches, and anxiety. But studies show that about 80% of Americans are fast metabolizers, and that's kind of good news, since drinking coffee can decrease your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's disease, and even some certain types of cancer. That's your HealthCast today. I'm Christy Krueger. Have a great weekend. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Christy. And Hurricane Matthew is still a massive Category 3 storm. These are live pictures now of how the storm is delivering a damaging blow to coastal cities in Florida and eventually Georgia and the Carolinas. And you can see right there just a lot of rain. Flooding, of course, is a big concern, not only in Jacksonville Beach, where we actually saw the beach was breached, but uh, the St. John Rivers, uh, River could certainly flood, and that is a concern. Much more on Hurricane Matthew coming up on Local 10 News at 5 o'clock. As we continue to track Hurricane Matthew, we want to take a look back. So here are some of the sights and sounds. A lot of water and rain uh, that seems to just be coming from every direction. Uh, also, uh, yeah, part of that light is uh, going down the street right now. So that's the type of stuff that so, uh, into sorry. you or into your to your vehicle. Uh, we did see someone out here driving. That's not safe right now either. Yeah, not, not a good idea. You and Sasha, you, you keep cutting in and out. We understand why, because the, the wind is so strong. Yeah. Your signal is breaking up as far as your audio. Please get inside. She's propped up against that pole. Once we get through this tunnel, it gets a little bit better on the front of the building. Now, right across the way, you can see the Indian River is right across the way here. And this is where we've been reporting from most of the time. And you can see just how hard the wind and rain is right now. It is really coming down. I mean, it actually hurts my face a little bit, the uh, way the water is pelting me. But you, this is where we've been reporting from. And over here, if we step behind this wall, it gets a little bit better. But you can tell it is very hot. Uh, the wind is very high. We're getting a lot of rain, and those gusts are definitely, if they're not hurricane force yet, it, it, we're definitely getting the gusts. Mother Nature, very powerful. That's going to do it for Local 10 News at 430. Calvin and Lori are back with the news at 5. All right, Janine, thank you. And right now with Local 10 News at 5 o'clock, Hurricane Matthew is just south of Jacksonville, but the outer bands are already sending big waves slamming into the shore. A rocky landing for someone's boat in Cocoa Beach after Matthew's storm surge carried it all the way up here. And we will show you how reporters are braving the storm to bring you the very latest on Hurricane Matthew. Also, while South Florida didn't see a lot of damage, this huge tree did come crashing down in Miami shores, creating a lot of cleanup work today. Off the top at 5 o'clock now, blown away. Take a look at this video of debris being blown across the road in Daytona Beach. And more dramatic video from Daytona Beach. A wall of water washing up under this boardwalk, flooding a road and sidewalk. And the owner of this fishing boat has a lot of work to do now after Matthew tossed the vessel onto these rocks like it was a toy. We have live team coverage for you as Matthew, the breaking news, now a category two storm, still roars up the Florida coast. Our own Andrew Perez is live in Daytona Beach. And Victor Akindo live down with Cocoa Beach for the look at the damage there. Victor, let's begin with you. All right, Calvin Lori, the story out here on Cocoa Beach continues to be the wind. Yes, Matthew has moved on from this area, but still leaving behind, as you guys just mentioned, a lot of debris everywhere you look here around the beach and the pier. You had a vent right there. Very up here, if you move along the pier, you've got that big hunk of metal that is now just dangling from the roof. Over here, we've got some kind of fan. That may have been uh, possibly a menu. We tried lifting it up, but it's really heavy here to Keys Oyster Bar. So there is some debris, there's some damage, but overall, we know that it could have been so much worse. Before dawn, Matthew made his presence felt, whipping winds and rain. Once daylight broke, we saw the damage. He's losing his roof. A lot of massive wind, that's all. And uh, when the eye came by, that's when uh, it was taking some of the roof off. One palm tree snapping in half and landing right on a roof. A homeowner blocked in by a downed tree. Another nearly missing a house. 
perhaps thanks to a higher power. Just to give you an idea about how strong the winds have been here on Cocoa Beach, look at what we just came across. This massive sign came down at some point within the last few hours right there from its base. This thing is huge, about 30 feet tall, we're guessing. It's a sign for what? Beach wave beachwear. It came right down as Hurricane Matthew passed by Cocoa Beach. Around town, this gas station now in pieces. Howling, the wind, stuff banging on the panels, uh, just chaos. But by this afternoon, people were coming back out to the beach to check out the surf. Heard a lot of wind, you know, I heard some branches falling, all kinds of stuff, you know, it was, it was gnarly. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. What about you? What'd you hear? Anything, anything loud? We heard a lot of transformers going to blowing up last night. Did you hear some of that? Yeah, dude, it was crazy. They were like blowing up in my backyard and stuff. Spoken like true Cocoa Beach locals. A lot of people here, the locals, a lot of people in this area do not have power still. Those transformers, they blew a lot last night. So that is a big process right now as the cleanup continues here, trying to get power back to all the people who live in this area. We can tell you that the main entrance to Cocoa Beach, the main bridge here into town, right now officials are not letting people through as they try to comb the area and make sure that it's safe before they let a lot of people come back in and return home. That's going to do it from Cocoa Beach. I'm Victor Okendo, Local 10 News. And Victor, so many people at least got out off the coastline there into the heart of Cocoa. How hard was it to get a hotel room last night or a motel, anything? Those were very hard to come by, Lori. I can tell you that firsthand. A lot of people did clear out of here as there was a mandatory evacuation order. And as a lot of people try to get to safety, move inland and into higher ground, those hotels went quickly. Thankfully, though, it looks like for the most part, everyone was able to hunker down and stay safe here. I'll send oh, it back to you. And that is good news. OK, Victor, thanks a lot. Our live team coverage of Hurricane Matthew moves north now to Daytona Beach. That's where Andrew Perez is live now with more on the conditions there. And it looks like things really were bad there overnight, Andrew. And then on top of that, Calvin, Lori, we know that more than a million people across the state are without power, and that's because of scenes like this. You've got this tree behind me that fell over on a power line. This has happened on almost every street out here in Daytona Beach. We've been weather roving for you for the last two days while our neighbors to the north start to assess all the damage. Traveling up I-95 proved a little tricky, but at least we had daylight on our side. Every gas station we stopped at, though, was empty and without power. After Hurricane Matthew did a number along Florida's coastline, we stopped in Daytona Beach, which was hit hard by the storm. The winds here ferocious, tossing debris around throughout the day. The waves are rough and flooding certainly a major issue here. We walked around this ghost town and found some locals hiding out after the storm. Now this is the worst one we've had, period. Well, I noticed almost the entire city is without power. I know. I know, and my husband's with the zip line and is in a wheelchair. We have the generators trying to keep him going with that. It was a rough day as some came out to witness Mother Nature's fury and see what was done to this seaside city. We even crossed paths with other news crews who, like us, had a rough night losing power and taking shelter. If you have, I'm going to send it back to you. I can certainly relate with her. You're taking a live look right now. I spoke to this homeowner a little while ago. I mean, think about it. Look how lucky that they were that this tree fell away from their home. It was so close. And then right over here, this gives you an idea how the homes in this area were boarded up. There are a lot of old homes here, very large homes, and they were all boarded up with wood for the most part. I can tell you it is very difficult to get gas around here. The main bridge here is also completely shut down. Nobody again is on cleanup mode just yet because they want to wait this thing out, make sure everything is 100% safe. That's the situation in Daytona Beach. I'm Andrew Perez, Local 10 News. Okay, Andrew, thanks so much. And now let's get to the latest on Hurricane Matthew from the National Hurricane Center. Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis here with the 5 o'clock advisory. Betty. Hey guys, we're finding it a little weaker. Maximum sustained winds at 110 miles per hour, but still a very powerful hurricane, no doubt. Category 2, I'm now on the high end at that. The center of circulation about 40 miles east of Jacksonville and 135 miles south of Savannah, Georgia. It's moving toward the north 
north at 12 miles per hour. It's still massive. The clouds extending well over the Carolinas. So more of the southeast coast will be dealing with the storm surge and the very heavy rainfall as this system continues its journey and that core clinging so close to the coastline. And also there's that tornado threat. Notice the tornado watch in effect for a part of South Carolina and also the coast of Georgia. We do want to talk about the projected path and where this is going to be heading. We know it's going to continue a journey pretty close to the southeast coast, pulling farther away from us. The, then as we're heading into the weekend, it could loop back around over the Atlantic waters and head southbound. It's expected to encounter some wind shear and undergo some weakening. So by Sunday afternoon, likely to be a tropical storm. But then notice what's happening Monday into Tuesday, tropical storm, and then coming back down toward the Bahamas as a tropical depression. And yes, at the end of this cone, you're noticing South Florida is back in it. Now here's the good news. It should be a much weaker system at that point, and there's a lot of uncertainty here. But we do want you to just kind of, you know, check in with us and stay on top of where this is going to head beyond the weekend. Right now, looks like it's going to be something really weak that we may or may not have to deal with, with down the road. Lori? Oh, right. Let's hope. Betty, thank mm -hmm. you.